My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. You are welcome to episode number 29 of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash ID. In this episode, we shall be looking at elasticity and Hooke's law. Before now, we know that matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Matter can exist as solid, as liquid, or as a gas. The solid state of matter has definite shape, definite volume, because the force of attraction or the molecule between them are close together, unlike gases and liquid, where the molecules making up the substance are far apart. One property of a solid is elasticity. What is elasticity? Elasticity is simply the ability of solids to stretch when force is applied. Ability to stress, they return to position after being stressed. If you played when you were young, you play with rubber ring or you play with tube. You will see in those days, you take a rubber, you drop. Let me use this as an example. Now, this is the original length. This is the original length, right? Now, if I apply force, what happens? You see, the length has increased. The more I apply force, the more the length increases. Which means, for elastic materials, force is proportional to length, or you can say extension, which is change in length. The more you apply force, the more the length increases. Now, let's look at it this way. If we have something like this, let's call here the load or force or effort. Let's call here the extension. For this case, you see that as the force is increasing, the extension is increasing. Force is proportional to extension. Force is proportional to extension, which means force depends on extension. The more the force, the more the extension. Let's call this proportional limit. Limit. Let's call here P. Now let's keep this point here like this. Let's call here P proportional limit. limit. Do you know why? At this point, the more the force, the more the extension. Force is proportional to extension. Then you get you draw, you draw, you draw, you draw. Now you notice that you get to a point where it is no longer extending. It is no longer extending. In that case, from here to here, like this, it is elastic. But at this point, it is no longer elastic. It has reached the elastic limit. So let's say here, as force is increasing, extension is increasing, it gets to a point where it is no longer that straight, no longer elastic. So let's do something like this. Let's call here E. E is elastic. Elastic limit. Now let's look at something. If you draw again, you will as you look at the material, you will see that some parts are already stressing out, worn out, about to cut. This material is undergoing what we refer to as plastic deformation. It is yielding. So at this point, this line is no longer straight. It's not we are not having something like this because the material is yielding. So we can call around here Y, which is yield, yield point. Now, at the proportional limit, as you stress, it will return to its position. Stretch, it will return to its position until you get to elastic limit. 
Now, after the elastic limit, once you stretch this thing, it will sag. It will no longer return. Like for rubber ring, you notice that the more you stretch, it now gets very, very long. So, if the elastic limit has been exceeded, you are stretching, it's remaining there. It's no longer returning back. Then you get to a maximum point where this thing can be stretched to. So, we can call that M. Yeah. Maximum. Maximum point or maximum load. Maximum. Load. Then let's look at something interesting. Although this is elastic, the more you draw, the more you draw, what happens? It has broken. So here, the material has broken. This is B. Let's call it breaking. Breaking point. This is the story of elastic material. Now. Hooke's law tries to tell us about elastic uh, materials. Hooke's law says that provided the elastic limit is not exceeded, provided the elastic limit is not exceeded, the force of a material is proportional to extension. He said, provided the elastic limit is not exceeded, the extension of elast an elastic material is proportional to the load or applied force. The extension is proportional to the load or applied force provided the elastic limit is not exceeded which means once the elastic limit is exceeded the extension is no longer equals the applied force so this region is the elastic region elastic region and here is where Hooke's law is obeyed Hooke's law so once again Hooke's law states that provided this elastic limit you don't exceed it the force is proportional to extension. As force increasing, extension will be increasing. This is the mathematical expression for Hooke's law. And in mathematics, we don't solve with proportionality sign. We solve with equality sign. So, to convert proportionality sign to equality sign, we introduce a constant, which means proportionality is the same thing as equals k. So, force is equal ke, where e, k is the constant. So this is constant. This constant is the force required to give a unit extension. Elastic constant is the force required to give a unit extension, which means the constant is equals force over extension. If you are comparing different forces and different extensions, you can arrive at something like this. If since k is constant, f1 over e1 is equals f2 over e2 so you have the first force and the first extension you have the second extension you can look for the second force look at something elastic material can be broken down into two brittle material and ductile material brittle b-r-o-i-t-t-l-e brittle materials are materials that break before they get to their elastic limits example glasses plastic they break before they get to their elastic limit. Meanwhile, ductile material, D-U-C-T-I-L-E, they can be they exceed the elastic limit before they break. So you can draw them. Then after elastic limit, they will now go to the end point, maximum load before breaking. But brittle materials, they don't go through all these stages. Before it gets to elastic limit, it has already shattered. For elastic materials, these formulas will be very, very helpful to you. The energy stored, energy stored, stored, is equals 1 over 2 Fe. So, energy is force times extension. Now, we already agree that force is equals Ke, which means if we substitute Ke for force here, energy stored is half K. E squared. We know that extension is equals force over constant, which implies that in this case, energy stored will be 1 over 2 F. Instead of E, we have F over K. So F over K. This is simply E giving us 1 over 2 F squared over K. These are the formulas you need to calculate the energy stored 
inelastic materials. Now, in terms of stretch, stress, strain, deformation, we have what to refer to as tensile stress. Tensile stress is the ratio of force to area. Force over area is tensile stress. Because when you apply force to elastic material, it stresses. It can change the shape and the size. So, to what area or to what extent is this force applied stretches the material? That is tensile stress. We have tensile strain. Stress can change the shape and size of objects. Now, this deformation, according to uh, resulting from stress, is referred to as strain, the effect of the stress. And strain is simply the extension over length, where this can be the original length. So, to what extension, to what extent did this stress extend the material and to the original length? In summary, tensile stress is force over area. Tensile strain is extension over length E over L. The ratio of tensile stress to tensile strain or tensile stress, stress divided by tensile strain is equals Young modulus. Young modulus. Why? So therefore, Young modulus is force over area divided by extension over length. This is equals force over area divided by extension over length. This is equals force over area times length over extension. Changing the division to multiplication, these other guys will invert. That is how to change division to multiplication. So from here, this is equals force times length over extension over times area. FL over AE is simply Young modulus. That should be FLE. FLE. <laughs> force length extension area. FLE. That should work for Young modulus. Now, the shortcut for this guy is PEIM. PEIM. Proportional limit. Elastic limit, heat point, maximum load, and breaking point. Breaking point is the shatter point, right? Now, apart from your modulus, we have shear modulus and other modulus. This is the formula. Look at what this question requires you to know. The catapult was being projected. At the point of projection, the energy stored is equals kinetic energy because kinetic energy is energy due to motion remember the pattern we use for an object launched just before touching the ground the kinetic energy of the object is equals the potential energy the potential energy of the object just before it touches the ground is equals kinetic energy so for a catapult thread at the point of projection of that catapult the energy stored in the capacity uh, <laughs> in the catapult or in the elastic material is equals kinetic energy and what is energy stored energy stored is half fe and what is kinetic energy kinetic energy is half mv squared now look at this the mass of the object is 500 grams m is equals 500 grams extension e is equals 20 cm and v is equals 40 meters per second and what are we looking for we are looking for force f is equals equation now look at the options you see that the options are in newton Force is mass times acceleration. This is kilogram meter per second squared. So the unit of Newton is equivalent to kilogram meters per second squared, which means the mass should be in kilogram 
The extension should be in meter. Time in second squared. So for this, mass in kilogram is 500 divided by 1000. That is 0 0.5 kilogram. Extension in meter is 200 divided by 100. To convert from cm to meter, divide by 100. This will give you 0 0.2 meters. And the velocity is already in meters per second. From here, food is ready. 1 over 2 times F times 0 0.2 is equals 1 over 2 times 0 0.5 times 40 squared. From here, 1 over 2 cancels 1 over 2. Then we are left with force is equals 0 0.5 times 40 squared divided by 0 0.2. This is the same thing as 5 over 10 times 40 squared divided by 2 over 10. Now from here, you can break them down. 40 is 40 squared is 40 times 40. So 5 over 10 times 40 times 40 over divided by 2 over 10. This is the same thing as 5 over 10 times 40 times 40 times 10 over 2. So from here, 10 cancels 10. From here, 2 cancels 40. That is 20. Therefore, we are left with 5 times 20. That is 100. 100 times 40. That is 4,000. So 4,000 is 4 times 10 to the power of 3. Option B is the correct option. Now, if you are not interested in learning how to break things down and solving without calculator, from here, you can get your answer straight up. That is it. A force of 500 Newton is applied to a steel wire of cross-sectional area 0.2 meter squared. What is the tensile stress? Wow. Tensile stress is force over area. And that is 500 Newton over area 0 0.2. 500 over 2 over 10. This is the decimal point. How many times do you need to move to get to the end? If you move once, you get to the end of the values. Meaning, you now have 0, 2. And this guy has been moved to this point. Since you move just once, that is 10 over 10. Which is the same thing as 2 over 10. If you move two times, let's say something like this. 0, 0.02. You move 1, 2. Twice to get to the end. That is over 100. What is rare? 0, 0, 2. Which is the same thing as 2 over 100. That is how to convert decimal to fraction. From here, this is the same thing as 500 divided by 2 over 10. This is 500 times 10 over 2. Converting division to multiplication. What does that give you? That will give you 5. 500 times 10. That is 5,000 divided by 2. This is 2,500. So 2,500. What options am I seeing? 2,500. <clears throat> okay, now 2500 is 2.5 times 10 to the power of 3. Look at it. 2500 means that the decimal point is here. That is the meaning. No decimal here, it's already here. How do you get 2.5 from 2500? You move 1, 2, 3. Since you move 3 times and you are moving from this side towards this side, it is positive. So this is. 2.5 times 10 raised to the power of 3. Option B is the correct option. A situation where you are given an original length and a new length, which is two lengths. The extension is changing length. The new length minus old length. So if you have originally 20 cm, then new length 
1 cm. The extension E is 20.1 cm minus 20 cm. That should give you 0 0.1 cm. This is the extension. And the original length is 20. So if you are comparing the extension and the original length, that is 0 0.1 divided by 20. So that will give you the strain, the change in length over original length in the strain. I have so many other questions here under elasticity and young modulus. But we can't answer all that. This is why you need to install the Flash Learners Jam application using the, the description below, visiting flashlearners.com or search Flash Learners Jam on Play Store. You will see the application right there. Install, open the app, under physics, click on elasticity. You will see only questions under elasticity. Play with them, answer. If you have any problem, reach me on WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, and other handles, Flash Learners, or I am Flash Ivy. I will be glad to attend to you. Ladies and gentlemen, to whom much is given, should not run away from with it. See you in the next episode.